this video will show you how to assemble and place a sectional matrix system on a posterior tooth. Now there are a wide variety of brands out there to choose from. Some are easier to use than others, but they all have a similar concept. They're going to use these sectional matrix pieces, usually they're kidney bean shaped, and they're going to use tension rings to hold that matrix against the tooth. So for my setup, I have a Mir Explorer cotton pliers. I have a variety of wedges, and I have my matrix, as well as my tension rings. And this here is a forceps, very similar to a dental dam forceps that will allow me to place the tension rings against the tooth. We are gonna work on tooth number 19 today. 19 has an MO preparation. So to use a matrix system, a sectional matrix system for this, I only need one matrix because we're only dealing with one proximal surface and I just need one of these rings. And it really doesn't matter which one I use as long as I place it on the tooth properly. I'm going to bring the camera a little closer. All right, so we're a little closer so you can see the preparation a little better. Now, just for reference, we're dealing with an MO prep. That's why we only need one of the matrix pieces. If we were going to work on tooth number 18, if you notice it's an MOD, I would need two matrices, one for the mesial side, one for the distal side. I'm going to pick up the matrix with my cotton pliers. And when you look at the matrix, it looks like a little kidney bean shaped, kidney bean shape. It is pre-contoured. If you notice, it has this curve to it. That curve will hug the tooth. The divot at the top corresponds to the occlusal surface of the tooth and the bump here on the bottom, the curve outward, goes into the sulcus. So I'm going to turn this around so the contour will go against the tooth. I'm going to floss this into position, kind of seesaw back and forth into the sulcus. You look at that, you can see it's against the preparation. I'm going to slide it to the lingual slightly to even up the edge. Working on these models is a little more challenging, although it is easy because I don't have to deal with saliva or a tongue or cheeks, but the gingival tissue is a little rubbery, it's a little stiff. I need to secure this matrix into position. I'm going to use a wedge to do that. And this is a wooden wedge. It's triangular in shape. And that triangle mimics the interproximal space. So the base of the triangle goes against the gingiva. And the curve of the tip should curve away from the gingiva. So it will go in like this. Now before I start pushing, I want to keep a finger over the matrix piece so that it doesn't pop out. When you're putting a lot of pressure with a wedge, it tends to push the matrix out. So I'm going to start by pushing with my cotton pliers. Once it's partly in, I can continue pushing with my finger. Or if that's too hard, you can use the end of your cotton pliers and give it a nice firm push. And you will see the wedge come out on the buckle side. When you look down into the preparation, you'll see that the matrix is snug against the preparation there. 
Next thing to do is to place my ring. So I mentioned it doesn't matter which ring you use as long as it goes in the proper position. If you notice the feet of the ring, they're narrow here and they spread out at the top. The narrow part should face the proximal side. So this, if I were to use this gold ring, I would turn the feet down because I'm working on a mandibular. I can insert my forceps into the ring. I'll give it a little squeeze to secure it. And as you place this, you want to squeeze your forceps to expand the ring. And you want to press the feet of the ring against the band. And I'm pushing it down towards the gingiva. And notice how it is on the tooth. I don't let the band, I'm sorry, I don't let the ring sit on top of the wedge. So the ring is pushing the band against the tooth and it should not sit on top of the wedge. It should be on the tooth side. One last step before the filling can be placed. You want to take a burnisher, doesn't matter what shape, ball, football, acorn, and you want to burnish the matrix against the neighboring tooth. By burnishing, it'll create a nice snug contact. If you notice if your ring slips out, you can reposition that. So slight reposition. This is one of the more challenging systems to use. There are really nice ones out there. If you find that it doesn't like to stay in place, for my issue, it's because the wedge is not in all the way. what I can do is try to insert that wedge a little further so that the ring has something to rest on when it goes into the inner proximal side. Let's try that again. This particular manufacturer for this system, they say you don't really need a wedge if you're using a flowable composite, but a lot of doctors like to use a wedge no matter what. There we go. There's some really nice systems out there um, that kind of straddle the wedge, have a V-shaped footprint. But it doesn't matter what you have, you always work with what you've got. And there we go. We have a sectional matrix set up for this MO preparation. And most doctors will use a sectional if they're doing a composite. But in theory, I guess it could be used for amalgam as well.